Okay, we're now being recorded. I'll just go back to my screen. Okay, so direct method, step down method, simultaneous method, chapter eight. So let's go on to chapter nine. Now, I would urge, I did send a, an actual problem using the solver equation. It's a lot quicker to do the simultaneous method if you use the solver equation in Excel. So go back to the problem that I sent you and try both. Try to do it by the simultaneous method or the solver equation. Okay, so where are we? Chapter eight. So chapter nine. Chapter nine, joint products. Joint product costs, four methods. Somebody tell me one of the four methods. Now joint product costs, remember, we use, let's use the milk industry. You're producing milk at a split off point. And then at that split off point, you could get cream, butter, etc. So at that split off point, we need to allocate costs. What, what part of costs go to cream? What part of, well, revenue and costs? And what part of revenue and costs go to butter? What part of revenue costs go to yogurt? Et cetera, et cetera. So there's basically four methods. Who can name the first method? Or one of the four. We just did this a couple lectures. Serena, can you name one method for a joint product cost? Sorry, I'm just looking through my notes. I can't remember. <laughs> How about so anybody else? Does anybody else remember the four methods? Physical, is it physical output method? Chad, do you remember exactly what physical output is? Physical. Uh, can I say one? Sure. Um, is the average unit cost method part of the part of the joint product costs? The average unit cost method. Yeah, I was thinking of that. Um, not sure what you mean by average unit cost. Is but there yes. a weighted average? Sir. Is there a weighted average? Yeah, I think there's a weighted average method, yeah. Um, maybe you're talking about constant gross margin. Constant gross margin. Let's say I've got product. I've got basically revenue expense for product one. Product one, and then I got revenue and expense for product two. So cost and gross margin is you, you basically sum both products expense. Then you get, let's say I get $500 gross margin. You then take the percentage, you get something like 0.25 gross margin. And then you'll have traceable costs. You have traceable costs here, traceable costs here. So you apply that gross first, and then you got total sales. So you apply that constant gross margin against the sales and then deduct the traceable costs to get your gross margin. So two steps, two step method. Two steps, first is calculate the constant GM and then apply GM against, well, net it, net GM against expense. expense. 
So I don't know if that was what you're thinking about weighted average. Now, physical allocation is, let's say you've got tons. You're just gonna allocate between products based on tons. Um, the most simplest allocation and the quickest, not necessarily the most accurate. Um, who can name another method? So we've got physical, we've got constant gross margin. Sales value, that's good. Very good. So sales value at split off. Remember product one, product two. In this case, they're going to give you instead of revenue, let's go over here. Product one, product two, sales at split off. And then over here, sales at split off. You're going to take the total and then you're going to allocate based on that sales on split off to the joint cost. I'll give you a joint cost number. So allocate based on sales split off, take the total of these two. Let's say I want to allocate the product one. This divided by total times the joint cost. And that'll get your allocation. This divided by total times joint cost will give you the allocation. So they'll give you a number, and usually the joint costs that split off. And then you allocate based on the sales value that split off. Same thing with the physical allocation. They'll give you the number of tons, tons between product one and two, total. Then they'll give you joint costs that split off, allocate based on the tons times the joint costs to product one, allocate the tons based on product two, the joint cost, same thing. What was the fourth one? Net realizable value. That's net realizable value. So what is net realizable value? Who can tell me what net realizable value is? It's used in inventory a lot as well. Anybody? Chad, do you know what net realizable value is? Alina, is your screen working now? Was it a um, sales value minus um, separable cost? Sales minus separable cost. Correct. Well, actually, so, yeah, sales minus cost, basically which is the NRV. So same, same thing you're gonna do with, remember what I told you about sales split off? They're gonna give you sales or net, they're gonna give you NRV. So NRV here, or you're gonna calculate the NRV here, and then you got this joint cost that's split off. And then you got a total. So again, you're gonna allocate, you calculate the net realizable value, sales less cost for product one. So um, Constantine? Yes, sir. Uh, there's a student in the waiting room, uh, Chendu. Oh, sorry. I'll bring him in here. Thank you. All right. No problem. And same thing, you calculate the net realizable value, you're going to be getting a joint cost, then you allocate based on that joint cost. So, so that's chapter nine. Chapter 10. What do we do in chapter 10? That's pretty recent. We have master budgets, right? Master budgets. What's the first step for our budgeting? What do you need first before you can start budgeting? What's the first step? Uh, calculate your total revenue expected. 
All right, perfect. So you're usually going to get units of sales, a forecast, and you might have sale or price per unit. You're going to calculate your total revenue based on units. And then you're going to also, you have to do the second step is your production units. Actually, this is before you calculate your revenue. You want to calculate your production units. So you got total sales units. You're going to adjust for your beginning inventory and your ending inventory. Now, beginning finished goods inventory. And then ending finish or finished goods. Yeah, ending finished goods. In inventory. That will give you your production in units. Production in units. Then you use those units to calculate, you take the price per unit production units to calculate your sales. What's next after that? You're going to do what? The direct materials budget? You're going to do a direct labor budget? Manufacturing overhead budget? You're then going to do your cost of goods budget. Well, before you do that, you want to calculate an inventory. Oh, inventory. You want to do a per unit cost of your product. Now that you've got this, you can get your direct materials per unit. You can get your direct labor. Per hour, you can get your overhead. You can calculate your variable overhead and your fixed overhead per unit. And then you know your sales per unit. So you're able to get your per unit costs, per unit revenue, and costs. That'll enable you to do a cost of goods sold. From your cost of goods sold budget, you're going to do a budgeted income statement. And after all that is done, you then can start on your cash budget, which we will cover today. So, part of today is cash budget. Now, cash budget. Who here, um, has anybody done any cash flow analysis or cash budgeting? Just uh, text me. I just want to get an idea from the class. Nope, Chad hasn't done a cash budget. Have you done, in your previous studies, have you ever done a cash budget? Anybody else? Let's get some more people here. Who here has done a cash budget or seen a cash budget? Alina says no. Let's get a couple more people here. Rafat, no. Serena, no. Anybody else? Not for Manu, but have done for an MPO. That's great. Yihan hasn't. Okay, so a lot of you people haven't. So everybody here is going to university, correct? Who here is um, doing any, anybody doing a cash budget? 
Do you keep track of you well, how much money you make during the month or how much you collect in your student loan? And then how much you pay in expenses, grocery bills or, or what have you? I always keep track of. Okay. Most people have it. So the first step in a cash budget is you've got basically a bank account. And let's, the first thing you're gonna do is your opening balance. Whatever your number, let's say 15,000, that's your opening balance. Now, the next step is cash receipts. Cash receipts is what you've collected. Now, you may have credit. There's two parts of it. You may have straight cash collections. You may have credit collections. If I invoice somebody, there, it may be 30 day terms, basically, well, let's just assume invoicing usually at 30 days. Let's say net 30 days. And based on past experience, 50% people pay within 30 days. And maybe 30% pay in 60 days. And let's say 10%, well, let's say the rest, 20% pay on 90 days. So in the cash budget, and let's say we do this monthly, January, all the way across. So I got my opening balance here. And we'll start 15,000. Here's my opening balance. So now cash receipts. And let me just back up a little bit. We have to have sales here first. So we got sales. And let's just say we have sales of 10,000 here, 20,000, 30,000, 70,000, 80,000, whatever. Well, now, here it says, okay, I'm going to collect, let's say, 50% first month. thirty percent second month. 20% third month. And let's and let's add something else here. My cash collections, 20% of my sales are gonna be cash collections. 80% is gonna be on credit. Let's put the percentages there, 20 and 80. Here's my sales. So January, let's pull that. Okay, 20%, I'm gonna collect right away in January, I'm gonna collect 20%. And let's just, and we're gonna go right across here. So you know right away, I had sales of 20,000, right away I'm gonna have cash collections of 20% or what have you. And then 80% is gonna be on credit. So times this by 80%. And pay attention, this will be on your quiz tonight. So all the way across. 
So I've got 8,000 credits, 16,000 credit, 24,056, and so on. Let me just take this out of here, put it over here. Now, I collect 50% the first month. So first month, then I get a second month, then I got third month. So I want to allocate, not allocate, I'm basically collecting funds based on past experience. So in January, first month, I'm going to collect 50% of my credit. So I'm going to calculate this line item. I've already collected my cash. The first month, you're going to go 8,000 times 50%. Now in February, I still got some of this left. I've only collected four out of the eight. So in February, I'm gonna collect another 30%, right? So I'm gonna go back to the 8,000 times 30%. And then the third month, out of this 8,000, I'm gonna collect the rest. So I'm going to go 8,000 times 20%. So if you add all these up, 8,000, 8,000. So I've allocated it in the month. So you can do the same thing for the next one. So I got on credit 80%, 16,000. So in February, that's 16,000. I collect 50%. In March, that's 16,000. I'm only gonna collect 30%. And then in April, that's 16,000. I'm gonna collect 20%. And then, so you're budgeting monthly. This could be quarterly. You're basically your business space. I would start with the months and then break it down by quarters. You need to be aware they give you 50% first month, 30, 20, allocated in a month. So that's cash receipts. Now you're going to have your direct material. Let's start with the production, which will enable you to calculate direct materials. direct materials. And then we have something called accounts payable. This is now the app. Now we start with the disbursements. You've done your receipts. You may have other receipts. Let's, um, I'll give you a few more examples here. You may have insurance here. Not insurance. I mean, you may have sold some equipment. Sale of proceeds on equipment. Now, Let's just say it happened in May. So that's, that's money coming in. So these are all cash inflows. Any cash inflow where you receive funds, this is part of your cash receipts. Who can come up with, does anybody else have any other examples of cash receipts other than proceeds on in equipment? How about investment income? No? Question. Yes. Um, did you stop at the second month? You didn't bring down the 24,000 from March, correct? The 24,000 from, oh, I stopped here. You can go up. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just confused. I just stopped here, right? Yeah, yeah. So the next one, I want to do March. I go 24,000 times 50, and then I go 24,000 times 30, and so on and so forth. Yeah, sounds good. Any other questions? Okay, now accounts payable. We'll go through production and direct materials. This is more, you wanna, we'll do an example of that one. We've got, I got an example where I'm gonna show you 
all of these. I just want to go through the main main ones here. So disbursements is what you pay out. So accounts payable. Once you do your production budgets, you're going to flow into an accounts payable. So accounts payable, you're going to have the same sort of thing. Um, in 30 days, 60. In 30 days, I have to pay. 50% um, payments occur in 30 days or 50% occur in 60 days, whatever it is. You're gonna allocate it based on the months, whatever percentages they give you. Um, what other disbursements you may have? You're gonna have insurance. You pay out insurance. I think um, the budget case has got insurance. Payroll, you may have payroll here. Labor expenses. Actually, this is where your direct labor budget's gonna go. And then your MO budget, manufacturing budget's gonna go here as well. And then you're gonna have total disbursements. And what's the net of that? So you're gonna total all your receipts. So you're gonna have total receipts here. Yeah. And that against your total, whatever your disbursements are. Question for you. Yep. If the formula you just put in to calculate total receipts, would that not, would that not be double counting because you also have your 8,000 on credit in there? No, because the, the assumption is I've got my sales of $10,000. 20% I'm going to collect in cash right here. So right away, I'm going to collect 20%. 80% of it's going to be credit. Yeah, but you're only collecting 4,000 this month, and then the remaining four will be in subsequent months, right? Right, plus the two gives you 10, right? This is your total sales here. Yeah, but your total receipts, you're saying, is 14,000 there. Oh, yeah, sorry. Should be... Two thousand plus I've got eight thousand here, ten thousand. Oh wait. Okay, so I've got to change the way this is adding it up. So I got ten thousand here. I got the four. What am I missing here? Ten thousand plus. Would you not just go 2,000 plus 4,000 because your actual cash you collected for the month would be six with another oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what it is. So you got to go 2,000 plus the four. Thank you. Well, that's wrong. Thanks for catching that. Exactly. Right, exactly, thank you. Um, once we do the disbursements, you deduct your disbursements, you're gonna have a surplus or whatever deficit. Then you may have a line of credit. Or, or, and you might have an investment account as well. If I'm in a surplus, I'll put money in my investment account, earn interest. You may have an interest rate here. If I'm in a deficit, I'm going to dip into my line of credit. So 
let's say I have an opening balance of whatever it is, 100,000 line of credit. I'm in a deficit of let's say negative 50,000. That means I'm going to eat up. I'm going to borrow fifty thousand. I'm going to borrow fifty thousand. You're going to calculate an interest rate based on that fifty thousand, whatever it is, point zero three six five. Let's say. Let's say it's quarterly, your interest is quarterly. So now I dip into my line of credit. So my total line of credit is 51,825. So on your budget, so January, let's say I got a negative 51,825. And let's say in February, Instead of um, a deficit, so here we had a deficit of negative fifty thousand. Let's say in February, I got a surplus of a hundred thousand. So if I got a surplus, I can pay off my line of credit. So if I got this plus this, so now I'm in a surplus forty eight thousand. And now let's say my investment, I'm going to put that in my investment account and then calculate positive interest on that. So that's the purpose of the budget. The main purpose, your receipts, your disbursements, surplus deficit, if you have a line of credit, you adjust accordingly. And I want to do a simple example here. That one's a long one. Let's do a cash. Here's a cash receipt example. So let's take five minutes to go over this. So this is 10.33. Not sure what page that is at. Let's quickly go over and do, we've got downward ink. Budgeted sales for second quarter, 400,000 for April, 525,000 for May, 600,000 for June, Normally 20% of cash sales, 80% of accounts are on account. As well, 30% of the sales and account are co collected during the month, 50% in the following month, 20% in the second month. Um, don't worry about the, we won't go over the AR balance today. All I want you guys to do, prepare a schedule of cash collections for the second quarter by month and in total. Is that clear? Yep. Yes? Okay, so 10.33, um, let's take about, so we've already gone through a pretty good problem here. Let's, um, let's take, how about is seven, mm, take it up around five after seven, is that enough time? Okay, so set up the spreadsheet like I did it over here or similar. And let's see. And they're basically asking April, May, June, do the schedule of cash collections by month and in total. It says second quarter. Second quarter is April, May, and June. So let's take it up at 705. Constantine? Yes. Yeah. Are you done going over the midterm stuff? Are we doing chapters 11 and 12 on the midterm? Yes. So let's go, where was my review here? <laughs> was that another spreadsheet? Um, you guys work on the problems. Let me find where I was doing that review. I don't think it was on this spread. It's above line 66. Oh. Frozen. 
I'll come on. Oh, I've got a split there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. All right, so chapter eight, chapter 10. Okay, so chapter 11. I'm not done with chapter 10 yet. We've got one more that we did last month. So chapter 10, remember the flexible budget. Remember we had sales, we had a budget, then we had costs. Okay, costs. Let's say they were direct labor, let's say direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, we had total costs. Yeah, stop right there. Direct materials, direct labor, you had your contribution margin, then you had variable overhead, fixed overhead, and you had operating income. So flexible budget, remember, we had our actual sales, we had our actual, what occurred at a moment of time, then we had our static budget over here. At the beginning of the year, based on our strategic plan, we set up a static budget. This is your budget for the year. Guess what's in the middle, the flexible budget. Does anybody remember how we calculated a flexible budget? It's based on your activity level, right? machine hours, I've got a certain amount of machine hours. You take your actual machine hours times your standard price or your budget price, it'll be your budget price to get a flexible budget. So you've got your actual, your flexible and your static budget. And based on that, we calculated variances. So your first variance is what? Actual, let's start with the total variance. Total variance is actual minus static. And then you've got another variance which is your flexible variance is actual minus your flexible budget. Then your third variance is your flexible budget. Flexible budget minus your static. Notice, always left to right, actual minus flexible, flexible minus static. Remember when it's favorable, you have unfavorable or favorable, unfavorable or favorable, unfavorable or favorable. So this variance and this variance is going to equal to your total variance. So that's your check. When you do your variance here, then you do your variance here, your total variance between here and here are going to equal. So that's your check. What's the check? Let's number these. One, two, three. Your check is one and two. One and two is going to equal three. Equal three. This variance and this variance equals this variance. Sorry. This variance. Which one am I here? So actual minus static. Yeah, this is your total variance here. This is your total variance. This variance equals two plus three. The total variance, let's call it one total variance equals two plus three. So your total variance is gonna be equal to this variance plus this variance. 
make sure you have to have it if unfavorable or favorable. And then these variances, let's add another line item here. So variances here. So you're gonna do a variance for sales, you're gonna do a variance for cost, you're gonna do one for each one, basically. So you can do a variance for the sales using the same thing, total variance for sales. The total variance of the entire income statement would be the operating income. So you can do a total variance because this basically nets against all these. So your total variance for the entire, entire budget would be the operating income. But question could ask, what's the sales? What's my, what's my variance between actual and flexible for sales? What's my variance for direct materials between actual and flexible? So that's basically flexible budgets. So on chapter 11, which is today's lecture, yes, we're gonna drill down on these variances. These are level one and level two variances. So right here for direct materials, direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. We are gonna use the same format, but we're gonna go one level down. So we're gonna have, so chapter 11, we're gonna have actual price. We're gonna have our actuals again. We're gonna have actuals. We're gonna have a flexible budget again. And then we're gonna have a static. And what we're gonna have here is standard costs. So every company has standard costs. What is the standard cost for the direct materials? It's basically their budget at costs. So for direct materials, you're gonna have actual price of your materials times your actual quantity. Your flexible budget is gonna be your actual, gonna be your actual price times your standard quantity. Sorry, it's gonna be your standard price times your actual quantity. Your static standard price times standard quantity. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna have this, we're going to calculate variances, actual less flexible, flexible less static. So you're going to have, now I know the textbook uses more of a formula base. I'm going to say, we're going to go through a problem today. Actually, we're going to go through the self-study problem where we're going to do it this way. It's a lot quicker and it makes more sense. So direct labor is actual hours times actual rate. And then we're gonna go standard, standard, standard rate times actual hours, standard rate times standard hours. Your variable overhead will usually is based on direct labor hours. So it'll be similar to this. So these are standard cost variances. You see how it flows from what we did in chapter 10? This is more of an overall, but now we're drilling down into direct materials. We're drilling down to direct labor. We're drilling down from manufact from overhead. We're drilling down into the input costs. So we're drilling down into the input costs. So then we're gonna do contribution margin variances. So same thing, we're gonna have contribution margin, a little bit different here. So we're gonna have product one. So 
the product one, product two, and contribution margin. And then we're going to have actual revenue. So we're going to have flexible and static again. So we'll go over in detail contribution margin variances. There's two, there's sales variances, contribution margin variances, something called sales mix. Sales mix, let's say you have two products. Product one, maybe sell 75% of the, 75% of sales is product one. Product two may have 25% of sales. So the sales mix variances are gonna be in between here. It's gonna drill down even further. We're gonna add another column here. So if I take this out, cut, we're gonna have a sales mix. So this is the sales mix. So you're gonna have more variances between here and here. We'll cover that last. And also in the standard cost, you may have standard cost. Same thing, same as this, you can have, oh, hold on here. Standard cost mixed variances. Let me just take this down. So we're gonna add sales mix, um, cost mix. So you're gonna have a cost mix percentages based on your different cost mixes. So we'll go through an example, but it's basically gonna have, again, two products based on cost mixes. But that's, that's chapter 11. So I've got a comprehensive problem based on self-study one that we'll set up and go through. Um, but that covers it, I think that covers it. So chapter 11 is standard cost. Chapter 12 is your revenue and CM. questions, but we're going to go through a comprehensive problem here. So let's, um, let's reconvene at 7.15. Any more questions on what's covered in the midterm? The only thing I will say is, depending how far we get today, we may only cover standard cost variances for this midterm, because um, we're falling a bit behind here. So, so I may not, we may not include, um, chapter 12 may be taken to the final exam because we've only got about 50 more minutes. So I think it's too much information. So for now, midterm will cover chapter seven, chapter eight, chapter nine, chapter 10, chapter 11, standard cost variances, chapter 12, depending how far, but I don't think, we're gonna have to take chapter 12 for the final exam. I don't think we have enough time. It's too much, too many numbers. Is that good, Joe? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good for me. Anybody else? Yep. Good. So let's go back. So this is the problem we're going to do. For our cash receipts. So let's take a bit of a break. I will be back in about six or seven minutes. Has everybody started on this? 
I recommend everybody do this because you're going to see something like this on our quiz tonight. So I want everybody to do this question.
All right, everyone, let's, let's quickly go over this question. So Downward Inc. has budgeted sales for second quarter, 400,000 for April, 525,000 for May, 600,000 for June. Note that 20% of cash sales, 80% on account. 30% of the sales on account are normally collected during the month of sale. 50% the following month, 20% second month following sale. So we wanna do a cash collections for the second quarter, month, and in total. So second quarter is April, May, and June. So cash 20%, account is 80%. First month is 30, 50, and 20. So we break it down, April, May, June, and July. First thing, put down your sales. So you got 400, 525, and 600. 80% is on account or credit. So 400,000, I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. 400,000 times 80%, 320. In May, 420,000 times 80%. In June, 600,000 times 80%. That's my credit. These are my credit sales now. Multiply your sales by 80%. My cash sales, so 20, my cash sales are 20%. So, I mean, you can just minus the 400 minus the 320 or just calculate 400 times the 20%. So I calculate my cash sales. And then what I do, collections first month, collections second month, collections third month. First month, first month I know I'm gonna collect 30%. 30% times my credit sales, 320. I collect 96,000. I go to the second month. Second month, 320 times 320. Second month is 50%, 160, 160. Third month is 20%, 320 times 20%, 64,000. So you've got your 80, your 126. Hold on. Right, and what was the final one? 80% times 20%, sorry, that's the cash. 96,000 here. 160,000 here, 64,000 here. These three add up to your credit sales of 320. You do the same thing for the 420. So 420, first month is 30%, 420 times 30%. Let's just calculate that, 420 times 30%, 126,000. This one, so 126,000. For June, it's 210,000. For July, it's 84,000. So that's basically it. And then you just add up your receipts quarterly. So I'll let you guys finish that, but any questions on how to do this calculation? for your cash receipts. Um, Constantine, um, I got the top part, but I was wondering what we use the 250,000 AR for. Oh. Um, so I don't think the question asked about an accounts receivable, but what you wanna do is 
calculated and accounts receivable for July. So the way you calculate this, what did you collect in AR? You collected 240,000. Basically what you have to do is what did I collect and what's left over, what I didn't collect. Okay. And you should come out to 96,000. So what did I collect in May, June, and basically May, June, and what was, what I was left over is your balance. So in June, you had 50% balance in June. So June, 480,000, your second month is 50%. You still got 50% to collect. For May, you had 400, 420,000 still for May. You still got to collect, you still got, what is it, 20% in your third month. You still got 30% that makes up your receivable. You haven't collected that money yet. So to calculate your AR, I'm going to let you guys do the, go through the calculation. Whatever is collected and whatever is not collected is your balance. So go through the calculation, see if you can come out with 96,000. But for now, worry about the receipts. Let's do another one quickly. We'll come back to this AR. This one is 10.42. And I also got a practice one when you guys leave today. But let's have a quick look at 10.42. So everybody flip to 10.42. Okay, um, I've got a question here we're gonna have to We'll have to answer that question lately because we're running out of time here. So, so can everybody flip to 10.42? Is everybody there? Not sure what page, 10.42. Okay. So we got cash budget for revenues and expenses for Myrna Manufacturing located in France. We've got projected sales in units, 25,000, 30,000 in February, 32,000 in March, 35,000 in April. Product sells for $18 per unit. The firm pays 60% of its material purchases in the month 40% in the following month. So here's what I was talking about. This is your accounts payable now. This is your disbursement. So 60% in the month, 40% in the following month. 25% of customers are expected to pay in the month of sale, 3% discount, and then 70% are expected to pay in the following month. The rainy five will never pay. Um, for discounts, you will not be examined. Don't worry about the discounts. Worry about the 70% in the month, 20% the following month, five will never pay. So we've got materials, takes two kilograms to produce one unit of product. 
The material cost 75% per kilogram in January. No raw materials and in beginning inventories, but the managers want to end each month with enough for materials, 20% of the next month's production. We've got 0.5 labor to produce each unit. Labor is paid at $15 per hour. Overhead, $2 per unit, $25,000 per month. We also got some amortization and overhead. Overhead costs are paid as they're incurred. Manual will begin January, no finished goods, no work in process inventory. Managers want to end each month 25% of the month's following sales. No work in process. So let's quickly do a gosh budget here. I'm going to start with projected sales in units. That's up here. So we grab those numbers. We've got 25, 30, 32, and 35,000. Our price per unit, $18 per unit. Product sells for $18 per unit. Here's our receivables. Remember, 25% we collect the first month, the second month, 70%. 5% never pay. So materials, ending inventory next month is 20%. The material cost is $2 per kilogram. The raw material cost is 0.75. And again, the payables, we pay 60% the first month, we pay 40% the second month. Here's our labor cost. 0.5 direct labor hours per unit. Should be somewhere here. It takes 0.5 hours of labor per unit. The labor rate's $15 per hour. Overhead is two per unit. 25, we've also got 25% per month, including amortization of 12,000. So here's the amortization of 12,000. Overhead is estimated at $2 per unit plus 25,000 per month. So when you're doing these problems, get all the costs down. Get the, these are the units, the price per unit, your receivables, your materials, your payables, your labor and your overhead. So we're gonna do the cash receipts first. They mentioned 80,000 is your beginning cash balance. Should be somewhere here. There it is. Firm will begin February with a cash balance of 80,000. Your beginning cash balance. So your cash receipts for January. For January, 70% of sales. Here's your 70%. You've got price per unit. Let's just calculate the price per unit. January times 18. This times 18. This times 18. This times 18. And then they mentioned 70% of sales, cash receipts in January. January, this times 70, hold on here. Cash receipts in January, 70%. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, this is a, this should be 70% here. 25% here. 25% here. This month is 70%. So 70% of sales. Twenty-five percent. Okay. Seventy percent of sales. Twenty-five percent. Seventy 
70 the first month, beginning, so your receipts are 70% of sales. This is wrong, so it should be, first month is 70% times your 315. 220,000, then you're gonna go, my cash receipts at 25%. 25%. Times my 450. So I'll let you go through those cash receipts, but now we have to do the production requirements. So this is where we grab the units here 25,000, 30,000, 32,000, 35,000. This is your production. So you grab your units. What does it say about inventories? 25% the second month. So you have to grab the following month. It's 25% the following month. Second month is 25%. First month is 70%. 25% there, 25% there, 25% there. So you're ending inventory is the 20, sorry, that's the receivables. Where's our inventory here? 25% of our materials. Overhead, finished goods are 25% the following month. So we're calculating your finished goods are 25% the following month. So you calculate your inventory based on the following month. Following month is 30%. 32, 35, you calculate your ending inventory to get to your total. Now you need to deduct your beginning inventory. So to calculate your beginning inventory, you take the ending inventory that you calculated up here based on that 25% following month. So here's your beginning inventory, beginning inventory, ending inventory from previous month. Now you're up to your production needs. So once you got your production, just like when we did the master budget, you are now gonna calculate your material purchases budget. So all you need to do is take 32,000, you've got your production, you need to go back here. What's my direct materials cost? Overheads, $2, materials, $2 per unit kilogram. So I take my $2 all the way down here. So 32,500 times two, 30,500 times two. Thirty-two thousand seven fifty. Times two, sixty-one thousand times two, thirty-two thousand seven fifty times two. That's my materials purchases budget. Now I have to adjust for my ending inventory. Now ending inventory, twenty percent. So for materials, my ending inventory next month is twenty percent. So we do the same thing, 20% following month, 20% following month, 20% following month. Now you have to deduct my, in, my beginning inventory. I take my last ending inventory from January and I deduct those. I finally get to my total purchases per unit per month. Now, raw materials cost per unit is 0.75. Raw material cost per unit, you need to calculate that out. Now I've got my direct material purchases based January, February. Okay, so now I got my cash disbursements. Actually, I need to calculate my cash disbursements now based on what I've calculated on my production. 
So remember, for payables, it's pay first month 60%, pay second month 40%. So my disbursements are 57,000 from January. I've got my February 46,000 pay first month 60%. We go through the labor costs, 15,000 hours. Hourly rate is up here at 15. Total labor is 228. Overhead costs, cost per unit. You've got monthly amount of 25,000. I'm pulling the 25,000 overhead, but I've got amortization as well. So 74,000. The bottom line is we want to do a February cash budget. So we grab the beginning balance of the 80,000. So remember our beginning cash balance was 80,000. Our receipts add up to 333,000. When you do your receipt calculation, you should get to 333. Total receipts, now my disbursements, materials, 51,015, my total labor, 228,000, my overhead, 74,000. There's my ending balance. So you're adding your receipts. You need to calculate your production requirements. You then need to calculate your materials based on your production requirements, adjust for the inventories, and basically, this is how you get to your cash budget. You need to go through the problem to calculate these out. Quick question, Constantine. Yes, sir. Um, your cash budget there, if you could go, go down to it, all the way at the bottom. You're using that total overhead of 74000 right? Yeah. Would you not add back the amortization that's non-cash of twelve grand? Yep, so I think I did that. So I did this plus this minus the amortization, 74,000. So good point, yeah, you gotta deduct the amortization. Okay, sorry, I didn't see that, thank you. Actually, I should just make that. Remember that amortization is a non-cash charge. You adjust for it down here. Good question. Any other questions? Okay, we're running a lot of, I'm gonna have to let you guys, I'm gonna post this. I did another cash budget practice, do 10.44. Do 10.42 on your own for practice. I will post, I think I've got 10.44. I will post the solutions. So need to practice on this production requirements because the first step is your forecasted sales in units. Once you have your production requirements, you calculate a materials purchases budgets. When you do your business case, it's the same thing. You're gonna do a materials purchases budget adjusting for ending and beginning inventory. Once you got your materials adjusted for these months, then you do the disbursements based on your payables. Is it payable the first, how much is payable the first month? How much is payable the second month in order to do your cash budget? So briefly, we went over how to do the receipts, payables based on production, Labor is just a straight cost by your direct labor hour. And overhead is basically your total cost of overhead adjusted for amortization. That's how you get your total disbursements, your total receipts to get to your ending balance. Okay, we're gonna have to move on here. So let's go quickly to variance analysis, standard cost variance analysis.
And we're going to start with, I've got the clicker questions. You can go over that on your own. I want you guys to flip the self study 11.1. .1. This goes through all the variances. And we're going to go through this together because we've only got 14 minutes to go over this. So basically, Latifa is a cost accountant. Supervisor decided to use less costly labor this period. Latifia needs to prepare a report for a supervisor. And remember, we talked about standards. So every company sets the standards for their direct materials, manufacturing company, direct labor. They'll have standard rates for variable or fixed. These are basically your budgeted rates. <clears throat> so we've got three kilograms at 250 per kilogram. So that's our cost per unit for direct materials direct labor, variable fixed, and so on. So variable overhead is allocated by labor hours, fixed over overhead by unit. Our estimated production per month, 40,000 standard direct labor. Now, records for January based on production of 7,800 units. So direct materials purchased, these are your actual costs. So this is actually we produced 7,800 units. This is what we actually spent. So quickly, three kilograms at 250, 750 per unit. That's over here. So basically I'm gonna put an input page. I've got my direct labor, $15 per hour, $75 per unit. I get my variable overhead rates, direct labor hour is $3, $15 per unit. Fixed $20, stays at $20 per unit. My standard direct labor hours. So 40,000 is my standard direct labor hours. My standard production units. I produced 7,800 units. My actual is 8,000. So a bit of a trick here. How do I get my actual production in units? I need to calculate that. So basically, I've got 40,000 standard direct labor hours. My direct labor by five gets my actual production in units. So we'll go over that. It's not in the required. You need to calculate that. Direct materials purchased, 25,000 kilograms at 260. This is a key point. I've got purchased and then I got direct materials used. So that means I didn't use all of my 25,000 kil kilograms. So you need to calculate another variance. You're gonna calculate a price variance based on purchase and a price efficiency variance because you only used 23,100 of your kilograms. What happened to the other 1,900? Direct labor, our hours 40,100 at 14.60. Actual costs, variable overhead 119,000, 180,000. So we're going to quickly go over the variances. And this is how I want you guys to set up your variances. You can do it the way you can do it formula based, the way the textbook lays it out. The textbook also lays it out this way. I find this is the best way of doing it. So you're gonna create a column called actual cost. You're gonna create a column called flexible budget. You're gonna create a column called your static budget. So we're gonna start with direct materials. What's my actual cost for direct materials? Well, let's go back here. Actual cost direct materials. So I got direct materials, 25,000 at 260. So 25,000, I used 25,000 at 260. So I actually paid 65,000. 65,000 is my actual cost. So actual price times actual quantity. 
Now, what's my flexible budget? So my flexible budget should be my standard price times my standard quantity. What's my standard price for direct materials? We have to go back here. These are the standard prices here. Three kilograms at 250, $7.50 units. We use 25,000 call kilograms. This times 25,000. Hold on. Should be B23 times C5. B23 is my standard 25,000 times C5. C5. Right, 250. 250 is the price by kilograms. So if I go 25,000. Standard price 250, 62,500. 62,500. Now, remember what I said, there's another variance called efficiency. So this is my direct materials. We need to calculate a flexible budget based on the direct materials used. So I need to go 23,100 times 250, 57,750. And finally, my static budget, standard times standard. What's my standard? 250, what is my standard materials? 750 times my kilograms. So what is my standard kilograms? We standard production units is 7,800 times per unit direct materials, 58,500, 58,500. Did you see how I calculate the standard? This is the number of units we're estimating. This is our standard production units. We need to calculate, uh, multiplied by the direct material 750. So direct materials, simply actual cost mi minus flexible. So 65,000 minus 62,000. My efficiency is, are these two variances, but this is the way I do it. I want to do my total variance. What's my total variance? Total variance is 65,000 less my 58, 6,500. So that's my total variance right there, 6,500. So 65,000 minus 62,000, 2,500, unfavorable. I spent more than I budgeted. Efficiency. 57 less 58, 750, favorable. I spent less than my budget here. Total variance, 1750 between my direct materials price and my direct materials efficiency. Efficiency is here, price is here. My total variance is 1750. My check, 6500. My total variance is 6,500. Then I've got the variance between here and here is 7,250. And then my variance here. So that's the check, 1,750, 1,750. The bottom line is you need to get your actual cost, your flexible budget, your static budget. Direct labor, very similar. You're gonna calculate Price variances, efficiency variances, your total variance, you're gonna do a check. So what's my direct labor? My total direct labor, so I've got five hours, 15.75 per unit. Let's start with the actual. So my actual 40,000, 40,100 times 1460 should give me that. So we just go to D28. 
585,460. 30,100 times 14, that's my actual. Again, we're gonna calculate a standard flexible budget and a static budget. I'll let you guys do the calculations. But again, once you got these numbers, we start doing the variances. What's the variance? My labor price variance, my actual less my flexible. It's favorable because my cost is lower than my flexible. My labor efficiency, my budget is 601. It's more, it's unfavorable, 601 less than 585. What's my total variance? 460. So the total variance, this plus this is 460. How do I check? 585, actual 585 is my static. It's actually unfavorable. 585, I spent more than I budgeted, but it's a check. You do the variances between this and this. Then you do the total variance between this and your static. You check. Um, I let you guys do the variable overhead and the fixed overhead. I had another question set up for self-study 12.1. This is um, our contribution margin variances. But We've obviously run out of time. So for the midterm, you're only responsible for standard costs. For our next class, we're gonna go over, I will send you the lesson notes for chapter 12. We're gonna go over these um, contribution margin variances, mixed yield variances. Chapter 12 will be covered in your final exam. You're only responsible for cost variances. So I think we've got another two minutes before the exam starts. Um, so let me know when you guys are in the exam. I will answer some of our questions after the exam. One more thing, use the tutorial forum. If there's any questions, please post it on the tutorial forum and let me know so I can address your questions. Uh, is, is the quiz all multiple choice? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. 16 questions, multiple choice. Know when you guys are in. in about five seconds, I'll be in. All right, I'm in. All right, good luck, guys. And um, when you guys are done, let's take about five, ten minutes to summarize what we talked about today. Maybe do another. Any questions on the midterm?